Good day from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, and welcome to our coverage of the arrival of the unpiloted SpaceX Dragon cargo craft at the Orbital Laboratory. You're looking at a live view inside the ISS Flight Control Room here in Houston, where the Orbit One team of flight controllers is on duty at this hour. This is the lead flight control team for SpaceX Five Dragon operations, led by Flight Director Mike Lammers, who you see uh, in the middle of your picture. Uh, to his left, at the bottom of your screen, is Flight Director Dana Contella, and at the top of your screen, in the uh, gold shirt, is astronaut Randy Bresnik, the spacecraft communicator, who will be talking directly to the crew on board the International Space Station uh, throughout the course of this morning's activities. So far, so good. The rendezvous right on track. In fact, uh, the Dragon spacecraft uh, is running a few minutes ahead of schedule, meeting its gate posts as it uh, moves uh, through its rendezvous procedures that began with its launch atop the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on Saturday morning at 3.47 a.m. Central Time, 4.47 a.m. Eastern Time from the launch pad at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Some 10 minutes after launch, Dragon separated from the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket, deployed its solar arrays, all of its navigation systems uh, were checked out, and over the past 48 hours, it has been a flawless rendezvous for Dragon to this point, with Dragon inside 250 meters, or... Uh, or 820 feet of its target point, which will be a capture point uh, some 50 or so feet away from the International Space Station, where astronauts Butch Wilmore of NASA, the Expedition 42 commander, and flight engineer Samantha Cristoforetti of the European Space Agency will be standing by in the cupola of the uh, International Space Station, operating from a robotics workstation in the cupola to extend uh, the Canadarm2 robotic arm, the 57 foot-long robotic arm on the station that will be extended toward a grapple fixture on Dragon and uh, it will be grappled uh, and uh, locked on at the end of that end effector of the robotic arm uh, for a capture of Dragon. The current capture time is 5.12 a.m. Central Time, 6.12 a.m. Eastern Time, although there is nothing magic about that time. As long as uh, we are in daylight, if uh, the crew is ready to extend and capture a few minutes earlier uh, than planned, then they will be given the go-ahead by the flight control team in he here in Houston, uh, assuming that all of uh, the Dragon systems can accommodate that. Again, all of the rendezvous burns uh, so far have uh, been adjusted uh, accordingly so that uh, the uh, Dragon has arrived uh, at its milestone points uh, a few minutes ahead of schedule uh, with all of its systems in excellent shape. About an hour and a half ago at uh, 2.01 a.m. Central Time, 3.01 a.m. Eastern Time, Dragon arrived at a point uh, about eight nautical miles behind and underneath the International Space Station. Station Commander Butch Wilmore radioed down to Mission Control and spacecraft communicator Randy Bresnik that he was able to get his first view of the unpiloted cargo craft. Tally ho on Dragon, Houston. All right, Butch, thanks a lot. Good luck. Yeah, the sun is flashing off the solar rays and looks like it's winking at us. It's pretty neat. That's awesome. Again, uh, that uh, short exchange between Station Commander Butch Wilmore and Spacecraft Communicator Randy Bresnik here in Mission Control occurring about an hour and a half ago at a point at which uh, Dragon was some eight nautical miles behind and underneath the International Space Station. A short time after that, a height adjustment burn called the Approach Initiation Burn was uh, executed uh, automatically through the pre-programmed uh, a thruster firing sequence loaded into Dragon's computers, and that began its approach uh, to what is called the R-bar, the radial vector, the imaginary line drawn between the International Space Station and the center of the Earth. The uh, Dragon arrived at the R-bar directly underneath the station, uh, 
not quite an hour ago and began its uh, slow approach, uh, inching up the R bar towards uh, its various uh, gate posts, uh, first at the 350 meter point, then the 250 meter point, and now Dragon is moving uh, towards a position uh, some uh, 100 meters or 328 feet away from the station. There will be a final uh, station keeping uh, position some 30 meters directly below the station or 98 feet directly below the station. Uh, the uh, flight control teams here in Houston and at Hawthorne uh, in California, where the SpaceX flight control room is located, as you see in this live view from Hawthorne, uh, all of the flight control teams will tag up and provide a go-no-go -no -go decision for final approach and capture of the Dragon. Once Wilmore and Christopher Reddy put the clamps on the grapple fixture through the uh, station's robotic arm, then uh, they will take a breather while the robotics officer here in Mission Control, John Bellingham, uh, does his work to remotely uh, control and operate the station's uh, robotic arm, maneuvering Dragon into a position for uh, its installation on the Earth-facing port or the uh, Nader port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. Uh, the Dragon uh, will be carefully positioned uh, so that it is perfectly aligned. Um, its uh, common berthing mechanism uh, will be perfectly aligned with the uh, similar common berthing mechanism on the Earth-facing side of Harmony into what is called a pre-install position. And then uh, there will be a, a series of uh, ready-to-latch indications received here in Mission Control uh, where the uh, Dragon then will be bolted into place by 16 bolts, four gangs of four bolts apiece, uh, to securely uh, latch a Dragon onto the Earth-facing Port of Harmony, and that will be a hard mate uh, that will complete Dragon's journey to the International Space Station. The Dragon is uh, loaded with uh, some 2.6 tons of supplies and scientific experiments for the Expedition 42 crew. And in fact, uh, some of uh, the supplies on board Dragon are earmarked for Scott Kelly, the NASA astronaut who will be launching in just two months from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan to spend a full year in space with uh, Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko. Uh, Scott Kelly has uh, some crew preference items and a crew care package on board. Dragon that will be stowed away for him. Kelly on the left, Kornienko on the right, and that crew a picture of the two of them. Uh, the uh, two crew members here in Houston in the final uh, weeks of their training uh, prior to returning for good to Russia for the uh, final phase of the training that will lead to their launch on the afternoon of March 27th, Iconor, on their one-year mission aboard the International Space Station. One of the items also uh, being carried on board uh, the Dragon cargo craft is uh, a scientific instrument called the CATS. That is the uh, nickname of uh, that uh, particular science uh, investigation, the Cloud Aerosol Transport System that is housed in the trunk of the Dragon. Uh, on Friday, in the wee hours of Friday morning, if all goes as planned, CATS will be grappled uh, and uh, removed from the... Um, trunk of the Dragon and uh, will be uh, installed on the external uh, science uh, experiment platform of the Kibo module, the, the porch, if you will, of the Kibo module, along with uh, uh, several other experiments currently housed out there uh, to investigate um, aerosols and other phenomena in uh, the Earth's atmosphere. So that uh, uh, robotic operation coming up on Friday in the wee hours uh, of this week on Friday morning. Dragon is scheduled to spend about four weeks attached uh, to the uh, Harmony module of the International Space Station. Once it is bolted into place this morning, the crew uh, will spend uh, several hours later today uh, checking out uh, the uh, leak checks uh, that are common uh, for any visiting vehicle to the International Space Station to make sure that we have a tight seal uh, between uh, the vehicle just arrived and uh, the uh, International Space Station. Once uh, those leak checks are accomplished, uh, the crew, if it wishes to later today, uh, that's at their own discretion, can uh, feel free to open up the hatch to Dragon and begin to unload its cache of cargo, although the actual uh, hatch opening uh, is scheduled for the wee hours of Tuesday morning. So we'll uh, know more about that later today once we get Dragon uh, installed and latched and bolted uh, and uh, once the leak checks are completed by the crew on board the International Space Station.
The uh, International Space Station is currently orbiting 261 statute miles over the Indian Ocean, moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. All of the systems on board the International Space Station are in excellent shape. Uh, this activity is kicking off an extraordinarily busy six-week period for the crew on board the station that uh, not only will see Dragon's arrival today and its departure on February 10th, but also three spacewalks scheduled for mid to late February uh, by Butch Wilmore and Terry Vertz. The final departure of the European Automated Transfer Vehicle that is set for February 14th and a variety of other activity associated with scientific research on board the orbital outpost as well as the delivery of more supplies on a Russian uh, unmanned progress resupply vehicle that is scheduled for launch on February 17th from Baikonur. All right, we got some good news that uh, we've been tracking uh, early on the approach about 10 minutes the whole time, and so we expect a 30-meter arrival at approximately 0955. Um, there is an opportunity uh, to leave 30 meters early. If we hit the window of departing between 1013 and 1017, um, we'll actually get to the uh, go for capture window, and we'll just wait for sunrise plus one minute and your guys' positive evaluation that lighting is good, and we'll be able to go for a capture approximately 20 minutes early if you guys are ready. And uh, we'll be ready. If the conditions are good, we'll be ready to capture. Houston copies. Randy Bresnik talking to European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti, who's in the cupola of the uh, International Space Station, along with Station Commander Butch Wilmore, who will be primed for the uh, capture of Dragon, backed up by Christopher Reddy, who will be monitoring Dragon systems during the final phase of its approach uh, to be uh, placed in the uh, go for capture orientation just a few feet away from the International Space Station a short time from now. As you heard that uh, brief exchange, uh, uh, since uh, Dragon has arrived at its uh, milestone positions a few minutes ahead of schedule. It uh, can uh, be captured as early as uh, sunrise plus one minute. That would be the earliest go for capture that would be issued by the flight control team here in Houston, uh, depending on uh, whether or not uh, Dragon systems are all in order and if the crew is ready uh, to support an early uh, capture uh, for the Dragon spacecraft. There's nothing magic about the 5.12 a.m. capture time, uh, central time. Uh, that is uh, the target based on uh, pre-launch calculations by the uh, flight control team in Hawthorne, responsible for Dragon's uh, rendezvous uh, profile, as well as uh, the coordination with the visiting vehicle officer, Dave Harshman, here in Mission Control in Houston. So we'll be standing by to see uh, how much in, ad in uh, advance of that 512 capture time uh, we uh, are running. It is possible that Dragon could be grappled ahead of schedule this morning uh, because everything is going so smoothly. As uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, everything uh, on the Dragon has been operating uh, to perfection since it was launched atop the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in the wee hours Saturday morning. Uh, the Falcon 9 delivering Dragon into a nearly perfect preliminary orbit, after which uh, a series of pre-programmed uh, rendezvous maneuvers, uh, burns of its thrusters uh, were executed on computer command. And over the past two days, uh, the Dragon has increased its altitude and uh, its fine-tuning of its path to the International Space Station, placing it in position almost two hours ago uh, for uh, its point at which it executed uh, the height adjustment burn and uh, approach initiation burn, as it is called in the parlance of uh, the rendezvous world, uh, to begin its final approach uh, toward the R-bar, the position directly underneath the International Space Station, for its final uh, approach for capture. The capture itself, again, executed uh, by Wilmore and Christopher Reddy, operating 
uh, the station's robotic arm, the Canada Arm 2, from a robotics workstation in the cupola of the International Space Station, which is a standard practice now for arriving cargo vehicles at the International Space Station. Will Moore uh, and Terry Virts uh, will be collaborating on a trio of spacewalks beginning no earlier than February 16th now in order to equip uh, the uh, station uh, for the reconfiguration of several modules and a variety of hardware that will accommodate the installation of uh, the equipment needed for the eventual uh, arrival of the first of two international docking adapters later this year on the SpaceX 7 cargo craft uh, that is scheduled uh, for the summer time frame. The uh, arrival of the uh, international docking adapter, the first of two such adapters, will uh, set the stage for its installation on uh, the forward end of pressurized mating adapter number two, which used to be the port of call for space shuttles uh, before uh, the shuttle uh, retired, of course, uh, some four years ago. The uh, PMA-2, as it is known, at the forward uh, position of uh, the uh, Harmony module of the International Space Station will be equipped uh, with one of these docking adapters that can accommodate uh, the commercial crew vehicles that will be launched in the next several years uh, by commercial uh, companies uh, being Boeing and SpaceX at the moment. And there's a great view of the Dragon spacecraft as it flies uh, over the Indian Ocean to the southwest of the continent of uh, Australia. All of uh, the systems on Dragon in excellent shape as we uh, are approaching uh, the final uh, hour and a half of its two-day rendezvous to the International Space Station that to this point uh, has been flawless. Meanwhile, inside the cupola on the left is uh, Station Commander Butch Wilmore, Samantha Cristoforetti of the International Space Station in the middle of your picture, and uh, manning uh, the camera looking out of the windows is... Um, Alexander Samakutyaev, one of the three Russians on board the International Space Station, who arrived with Wilmore and Elena Sorova in late September on a Soyuz vehicle to begin their five and a half months on the orbital outpost. At the uh, SpaceX uh, Mission Control Center in Hawthorne, California, the uh, mission director for this uh, fifth commercial resupply flight of SpaceX and the sixth overall flight of the SpaceX Dragon to the station, Paul Tompkins, is reviewing uh, the flight rules and uh, the timeline for the rest of uh, Dragon's approach for capture. We are inside uh, 60 meters now, um, about to uh, approach the 30 meter hold point where the Dragon will put the brakes on and await a final check of its systems uh, before initiating its final approach for capture. As you can see in this view of Dragon, uh, 
the end of Dragon, uh, not with the solar rays, the other end at the uh, facing the 7 o'clock position on your screen. That is the passive common berthing mechanism at the end of uh, the Dragon cargo craft that uh, will be attached and bolted into place to the active common berthing mechanism on the earth-facing port of the Harmony module after uh, Dragon is captured. Wilmore and Christopher Reddy will uh, take a break and allow the robotics officer, uh, John Bellingham, here in Mission Control to uh, take over and maneuver uh, the Dragon uh, with the uh, counted arm too firmly in grasp of its grapple fixture uh, to a an installation position just a few uh, millimeters away from uh, the uh, ready to latch position where sensors in the uh, common berthing mechanism on the earth facing port of harmony will uh, sense uh, the positioning of the common berthing mechanism at the end of dragon and then uh, we'll begin the process of uh, bolting a dragon into place through a series of 16 bolts, four gangs of uh, four bolts apiece, uh, to form a hard mate between Dragon and Harmony. Uh, at that point, uh, the next uh, several hours uh, will be devoted uh, to leak checks to make sure that we have a, a tight seal between a uh, Dragon and the Earth-facing port of Harmony uh, before uh, the vestibule, the small passageway uh, between Harmony and uh, Dragon can be equipped for the eventual hatch opening of Dragon that is scheduled in the very early morning hours of Tuesday unless the crew wishes to press ahead late today in its, in its work day uh, to open the hatch uh, before the end of business and the start of their sleep period uh, some 11 and a half hours from now. SpaceX's uh, Dragon cargo craft that you see uh, now in this view from the end effector at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm as uh, it approaches the 30 meter station keeping position or 98 feet away from the station. The uh, top portion of Dragon that you see is uh, the only uh, cargo craft that returns to Earth able uh, to deliver uh, cargo and experiments back uh, to researchers uh, back on terra firma. The uh, current departure date for SpaceX is Tuesday, February 10th. The uh, release time at the moment is scheduled at 12.53 p.m. Central Time. That would result in a uh, splashdown uh, in the Pacific uh, shortly after 6 p.m. Central Time or 4 p.m. Pacific Time. SpaceX uh, will be uh, operating uh, and has approved uh, for a uh, nighttime recovery of the Dragon capsule out in the Pacific. With the uh, splashdown point expected to be some uh, 300 uh, nautical miles uh, southwest of uh, Long Beach, California.
station Houston on two for Butch. Dragon is holding at 30 meters. Please perform step four in 1.102. Primary range is 29 decimal 68. Secondary range is 29 decimal 51. The LEDs match the expectation. And we can confirm the hold. Houston Cup. And you can see uh, the same display being viewed uh, in the cupola uh, by Butch Wilmore and Samantha Christopher Reddy who are uh, operating uh, the station's robotic arm, the 57-foot-long Canadarm2, that will reach out and grapple the grapple fixture on Dragon a short time from now. A Dragon arriving at the uh, final hold point at 30 meters or 98 feet away from the station at 3.56 a.m. Central Time. SpaceX uh, Mission Director Paul Tompkins indicating uh, out of uh, the SpaceX control room in Hawthorne, California, that they are shooting for a departure at 4.13 a.m. Central Time to close the gap and uh, arrive at the capture point uh, at which uh, point Wilmore and Christopher Reddy will operate the arm to reach out and grab onto Dragon. So it does appear that we will have an earlier than planned capture of Dragon if all of its systems continue uh, to operate in excellent shape and if the crew is ready to do so. SpaceX uh, flight controllers uh, to be joined momentarily by the flight controllers here in Houston uh, taking a final go-no-go -no -go poll uh, for departure inside 30 meters. The International Space Station and uh, the SpaceX Dragon cargo craft loaded with 2.6 tons of cargo uh, for the Expedition 42 crew and uh, crews beyond that uh, moving into an orbital sunset over the uh, southern Tasman Sea, moving to the south of New Zealand, about to begin a southwest and northeasterly uh, track across the Pacific Ocean. Everything is in great shape uh, with Dragon, uh, heading for what appears to be an early capture time, much earlier than uh, the originally scheduled time of 5.12 a.m. Central Time. It appears that we will beat that. Uh, the expected departure time from the 30-meter station-keeping point now is 4.13 a.m. Central Time.
This is Mission Control Houston. Uh, to recap at this hour, uh, you're looking uh, at a view of the SpaceX Dragon unpiloted cargo craft filled with 2.6 tons of supplies and scientific experiments for the crew on board the International Space Station. This view out of the uh, end effector camera at the very end uh, of the 57 foot long Canadarm2 robotic arm. Inside uh, the cupola of the ISS, uh, there is Butch Wilmore, the station commander at the bottom, joined by European Space Agency flight engineer Samantha Christopher Reddy as they uh, review procedures prior to the time the Dragon will uh, begin its push inside 30 meters or 98 feet, uh, where it is station keeping at the moment. Uh, at the, the 57 foot mark or so, or the 50 foot mark, uh, Dragon uh, will be captured uh, by Wilmore operating uh, the arm, uh, backed up uh, in his efforts uh, by Christopher Reddy. You're also looking inside uh, the cupola, Russian cosmonaut uh, Alexander Samakutyaev, who is operating a uh, camera documenting uh, the Dragon as it sits passively over the uh, Pacific Ocean, flying uh, to the southeast of uh, New Zealand at the moment, moving from southwest to northeast. Dragon uh, arrived at all of its milestone points uh, some 20 minutes or so ahead of schedule each time. Uh, first uh, arriving at the uh, lower end of the R bar or the radial vector, the imaginary line drawn between uh, the International Space Station and the center of the Earth. Uh, it uh, moved up the R bar first to a 350 meter position, then 250 meters, and finally to the 30 meter mark where it is currently station keeping. Uh, we are expecting uh, the final go and uh, a departure inside 30 meters uh, to be initiated about eight minutes from now. And a good view of the uh, strobe light on Dragon uh, for situational awareness for the uh, flight control team here in Houston and at Hawthorne, California. The uh, visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control, Dave Harshman, has been talking uh, to his uh, counterparts uh, uh, in his back room as well as uh, in Hawthorne, California, making sure that all of the uh, ballistic and uh, rendezvous sensor uh, information and data uh, from Dragon all is aligned and everything is in great shape to this point as we are about six minutes away from Dragon reinitiating its final approach for capture. Houston on two, we have completed step four in one decimal one oh two, and the crew is ready for a dragon approach to capture point.
All right, Samantha, Houston copies that. We appreciate it. We'll be uh, giving the uh, go. Expect that around uh, 1013. And if we could get you guys to uh, do the pan from step three of 1.110 one for camera three, that'll uh, help out for the uh, capture. Houston, we copy that's in work. Coming up on about the four-minute mark before Dragon reinitiates its approach for capture, as you heard uh, Samantha Christopher Reddy uh, confirming that the crew uh, has completed its checklist and everything is in great shape uh, on board the station, ready uh, to receive a new cargo vehicle uh, filled with uh, some 2.6 tons of supplies and experiments. And here in the flight control room, uh, Mike Lammers, uh, the uh, station uh, flight director, has uh, given Paul Tompkins, the SpaceX flight director, mission director in Hawthorne, uh, final approval uh, from the team here in Houston uh, for Dragon to resume its uh, approach for capture to move inside 30 meters, uh, its final station keeping point. We're expecting uh, that uh, reinitiation of approach in about three minutes from now. Coming up on the resumption uh, of final approach by Dragon, uh, it will uh, reinitiate uh, its pre-programmed approach uh, just a few seconds from now. That would set us up for the earliest capture time at one minute after sunrise, or approximately 4.39 a.m. Central Time. We'll be standing by for an update on that. And uh, the Dragon has reinitiated its and uh, the Dragon has reinitiated its approach for capture by the crew on board the International Space Station. Dragon now moving inside 30 meters or 98 feet to its capture point. The International Space Station. Dragon now moving. Station Houston on two. 
Dragon has begun approach from 30 meters. Please perform step five in one decimal one zero two. It's a station we copy. It's a station we copy. Houston on two with the nap stage on block Bravo, if you're ready to copy. Ready copy Bravo, please. No changes in block Bravo, with the exception of the uh, offset. I see an offset of, uh, let's say, 10% of the vehicle length forward on camera three, and no port starboard offset. And I see an offset of about 10% of the vehicle with the starboard on camera nine and no forward aft offset. Houston copies all, grazie. This is Mission Control Houston, a good view of uh, the Dragon cargo craft launched by SpaceX from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida two days ago in the wee hours of Saturday morning at 3.47 a.m. Central, 4.47 a.m. Eastern Time. The uh, Dragon was inserted into a perfect preliminary orbit, uh, separating uh, from the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket uh, of SpaceX some 10 minutes or so after launch. It deployed its solar arrays. All of its navigational systems uh, were operated uh, and activated and uh, it has been uh, conducting an inexorable approach to the International Space Station ever since. All of uh, the major milestones uh, being ticked off somewhat ahead of schedule and as a result uh, the uh, grapple of uh, the Dragon is now expected less than 30 minutes from now somewhere in the uh, neighborhood of 439 central time 539 eastern time uh, the earliest uh, time for grapple would be one minute after sunrise and that is the time at 439 central 539 eastern we'll keep you updated on uh, the exact uh, grapple time because uh, dragon's capture is uh, anticipated to occur some 35 minutes ahead of schedule or so uh, we are also expecting its installation uh, to run ahead of schedule, and as a result, we've adjusted our uh, installation coverage time uh, to 6.45 a.m. Central, 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time, some 30 minutes ahead of where we had intended uh, to start our installation coverage. So uh, we'll keep you updated on all of uh, the timing of the key 
events for Dragon this morning, but at the moment, uh, with Dragon systems in excellent shape and a go for final approach being given by both the SpaceX flight control team in Hawthorne and the team here in Mission Control in Houston, uh, Dragon is uh, on uh, the final uh, few meters of its journey uh, where the robotic arm, you're looking at this view out of the end effector camera at the end of the Canadarm2 robotic arm. Uh, this uh, arm will be extended by Station Commander Butch Wilmore uh, for a grapple on the grapple fixture facing that end effector uh, with the current grapple time expected around 4.39 a.m. Central. The International Space Station and Dragon currently moving from southwest to northeast across the uh, Pacific Ocean will uh, cross the west coast of Mexico north of Guadalajara a short time from now. Again, uh, the grapple uh, of Dragon expected uh, to occur some 35 minutes ahead of schedule at a time uh, that would be no earlier than one minute after sunrise to provide the uh, appropriate lighting for Station Commander Butch Wilmore, who is the uh, prime crew member for the grapple of Dragon operating uh, from the robotics workstation inside the cupola of the International Space Station, backed up by European Space Agency flight engineer Samantha Christopher Reddy. Dragon now just 20 meters away from being captured. The uh, robotic arm will be put in motion by uh, Butch Wilmore on the uh, direction of the robotics officer here in Mission Control, John Bellingham.
a good view of the uh, grapple fixture on uh, the SpaceX uh, cargo ship, uh, the top portion of which uh, is the only uh, cargo vehicle that returns intact uh, with uh, returning cargo and scientific experiments of all of the international uh, fleet of uh, resupply vehicles. Uh, that grapple fixture directly underneath that is a, a suite of navigation sensors uh, used uh, to uh, uh, inform the SpaceX's onboard computers on the Dragon as to its position in space relative to the Earth and uh, to help uh, guide it during its complex rendezvous uh, to reach the International Space Station. Uh, the uh, Dragon is now about 16 meters away. Uh, the robotic arm will be in motion shortly uh, to reach out and grapple uh, the Dragon uh, to complete uh, its journey to the International Space Station. Once the grapple is completed, then the robotics officer here in Mission Control will take over and send the commands uh, to remotely maneuver Dragon into a pre-installed position uh, just a few centimeters uh, from the common berthing mechanism on the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. The bolting of Dragon uh, will then begin, um, monitored by uh, Butch Wilmore and Samantha Cristoforetti in the cupola of the International Space Station. Uh, that bolting uh, ensues uh, with four gangs of four bolts apiece, or 16 bolts in all, uh, securing Dragon for a hard mate uh, to the nadir or earth-facing port of Harmony. Houston on two for a dragon, we turned the strobe light off. Houston copy, thank you. All of the uh, navigational information continues uh, to come in uh, very well uh, and uh, on track uh, for the visiting vehicle officer here in Mission Control. Uh, you heard uh, Samantha Christopher already a moment ago uh, report that uh, she sent a command through a laptop computer in the cupola uh, to turn off the strobe light on uh, the uh, Dragon cargo craft uh, so as uh, to prevent it from being distracting uh, to uh, Station Commander Butch Wilmore as he extends uh, the station's robotic arm for a capture on that grapple fixture you see right in the middle of your screen.
the uh, SpaceX Dragon cargo craft in the International Space Station flying 261 statute miles, uh, passing just to the south of Baja, California, approaching the west coast of Mexico, north of Guadalajara, uh, on a track uh, taking uh, the two craft uh, from southwest to northeast. This uh, path will take uh, the two uh, vehicles uh, over northern Mexico and uh, southwest Texas, uh, passing uh, to the northwest of San Antonio a short time from now. Dragon has arrived at its capture point, according uh, to flight controllers at uh, the SpaceX Control Center in Hawthorne. Station Houston on two. Dragon is holding at the capture point. Please perform step six in one decimal one zero two. Houston Station, we copy and work. That uh, exchange uh, between Randy Bresnik, the spacecraft communicator here in Mission Control, and uh, Samantha Christopher Reddy, indicating uh, that the procedures now uh, will be counted on two towards uh, the grapple fixture on Dragon, uh, with capture anticipated no earlier than one minute after we put in place uh, to begin uh, the movement of the station's robotic arm, the Canadarm 2, towards uh, the grapple fixture on Dragon, uh, with capture anticipated no earlier than one minute after sunrise, uh, which would be approximately 4.39 a.m. Central Time, 5.39 Eastern, here to uh, grab onto Dragon and uh, get it uh, bolted into place, uh, running well ahead of schedule, some 35 minutes or so ahead of schedule, uh, since everything has been going so smoothly uh, with uh, the rendezvous and all of Dragon slid into place. Uh, as has been the case in previous missions, uh, if the crew continues uh, to be as eager as it has been throughout the course of the morning, and if everything continues to go smoothly, it is entirely feasible that the hatch uh, to the Dragon could be open late this afternoon as opposed to early tomorrow morning. Go ahead, Samantha. Right now as well, but we understand uh, we're going to be waiting for sunrise. Houston copies all, Samantha, and, yeah, and you are correct. Should be about another uh, seven minutes till we're sunrise, plus one minute, and the uh, expected or anticipated opening of the. Uh, okay. You copy that. Thanks. Thanks.
taking a, a poll of its uh, flight controllers to get a go, no-go to place uh, Dragon into what is called free drift, turning off its thrusters to prevent uh, the point of capture uh, with the Dragon that you see in view, uh, able uh, to be very quiescent uh, for its uh, capture by the end grapple fixture at the end uh, of uh, the Dragon that you see in view, uh, able uh, to be very defector on the station's Canadarm2 robotic arm. And a slight update on our uh, timing, uh, since uh, SpaceX is running uh, ahead of schedule with uh, Dragon uh, in great shape and ready uh, to be captured by Wilmore and Christopher Reddy. We expect that uh, to give the crew a go for capture uh, in five minutes from now at 4.40 Central Time, 5.40 Eastern Time. Uh, the uh, robotic arm then will be extended by Wilmore. Uh, Christopher Reddy will be monitoring uh, Dragon's systems both operating side by side in the cupola of the International Space Station. Uh, the uh, crossing point uh, here will be one minute after sunrise, uh, so the crew will be given a go at 4.40 East uh, Central Time, five minutes from now, to begin the final phase of this rendezvous procedure. Station Houston on two for Samantha. Just uh, reconfirming that you guys said that you are ready for capture at the opening of the window. Houston, that is affirmative. We are ready to go. Copy that, Butch. Stand by for the final go. Dragon and the International Space Station uh, currently uh, passing over Fort Wayne, Indiana, just about uh, to uh, fly directly over Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Detroit en route uh, to southern Canada. It is the Canadarm2 robotic arm on the station that is the focus of attention now. Butch Wilmore awaiting a, a final go to uh, begin uh, extending the uh, robotic arm at one minute uh, after sunrise. Uh, that is about uh, two minutes from now at which point uh, the uh, arm will be, sl uh, be positioned directly over the pin of the grapple fixture, and then will uh, the snares on the end effector will uh, grab on to uh, the uh, grapple fixture itself and close around it, uh, and at that point, Dragon will have been captured. We've uh, lost our uh, downlink television signal from the. We've uh, lost our uh, downlink television signal from the International Space Station here momentarily. It uh, should be reacquired uh, just a few minutes from now, ahead of uh, the actual capture of uh, Dragon.
And we've passed into an orbital sunrise. Uh, you can see a good view of Verts now, having joined uh, Wilmore and uh, Christopher Reddy in the cupola so that he can uh, document uh, the uh, final few moments of uh, the robotic uh, capture of the SpaceX Dragon cargo craft, loaded with 2.6 crew on board the International Space Station. Dragon and the station currently flying just to the north of que uh, Quebec City as the uh, Canadian-built uh, robotic arm is about uh, to move uh, towards the grapple fixture, uh, the final grapple of the cargo vehicle. Station Houston on two for Butch and Samantha. Just a second. Station Houston on two for Butch and Samantha. Just a little grapple of the cargo vehicle. Station Houston on step four in one decimal one one zero. And Houston on two, we copy, go for capture. Flight controllers report that Dragon is holding rock steady at its capture point. Butch Wilmore uh, now steady at its capture point. Butch Wilmore uh, now in the process of sending uh, the commands uh, from the robotics workstation in the cupola to extend uh, the 57-foot-long uh, Canadian-built robotic arm uh, for its grapple of the grapple fixture on uh, space grapple fixture on uh, SpaceX. The uh, the good view of that grapple fixture on the Dragon craft in the trunk of the Dragon is the uh, cloud aerosol transport system experiment, the CATS experiment, that will be uh, robotically uh, installed on the external experiment platform at the forward end of the Kibo module, on removed from the trunk and installed on the external experiment platform at the forward end of the Kibo module on Friday morning uh, to begin its work to study uh, aerosol phenomena in the Earth's atmosphere. We uh, will be losing our TV signal uh, once again uh, momentarily, just a few seconds from now, hoping uh, to reacquire it uh, before the actual capture of Dragon. On two for a delta, we're observing in step four decimal one. Go ahead, Smith. We sent leap age. We sent the command uh, capture automatic fast passive limp. We are supposed to very center the in the SSRMS tip leap page. We sent the command capture automatic fast passive limp. We are supposed to verify back drive passive speed fast. We have positive verification of speed fast. However, we see back drive none. Stand by.
This is Mission Control Houston uh, here in the flight control room. Uh, flight Director uh, Mike Lammers is having a uh, brief conversation with the robotics officer, John Bellingham, here in Mission Control, uh, just to ensure that uh, we understand uh, all of the systems parameters on the Canada Arm II robotic arm that is uh, awaiting its uh, final movement in for a grapple on the grapple fixture on the uh, Dragon spacecraft that you see here in the field of view. Uh, the uh, Dragon is in excellent shape, holding steady, just a few feet away uh, from the International Space Station's robotic arm. We expect uh, for a grapple of Dragon uh, that would occur ahead of schedule here. Playing that back drive none. And in the cupola, Station Commander Butch Wilmore and Samantha Cristoforetti awaiting further direction from the flight control team on proceeding uh, for the grapple of Dragon uh, that will complete its two-day rendezvous that began uh, with its launch from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida atop a Falcon 9 rocket by SpaceX two days ago. The uh, Dragon and the International Space Station flying 262 statute miles over the North Atlantic, beginning a uh, northwest to southeasterly track that will carry uh, the two craft uh, over the northwest coast of Africa a short time from now. Station Houston on two for the Dragon capture. Uh, it turns out that we had the same indications on SpaceX 4, so you guys have a go to proceed. Okay. And the robotics officer in mission control reports uh, that the trigger for the uh, end effector and the snares th that will grab on to the grapple fixture of Dragon are now hot. The uh, arm uh, beginning to move in for its uh, grapple of the Dragon at the end of this two-day rendezvous. The two spacecraft uh, moving from northwest to southeast, approaching uh, the border between France and Spain.
Dragon has now disabled its thrusters in the so-called free drift orientation so that uh, no inadvertent uh, thruster firings will perturbate the grapple of Dragon by the robotic arm that has now been set in motion by Station Commander Butch Wilmore operating from the robotics workstation in the cupola of the International Space Station. One meter now. The end effector is now over the grapple pin. And we have grapple at 4.54 a.m. Central Time, 5.54 a.m. Eastern Time. We have captured Dragon, 262 statute miles over the Mediterranean. The grapple occurring 18 minutes ahead of schedule. A perfect rendezvous for Dragon. Again, uh, Butch Wilmore operating the station's robotic arm, grappling uh, the grapple fixture on Dragon at 4.54 a.m. Central as uh, the two spacecraft flew 262 statute miles over the Mediterranean. Go for fast capture reconfiguration. Houston copies and correct. Congratulations, uh, Butch and Samantha. We'll call that one an OK three wire. Everybody says, not bad for a Navy guy. <laughs> the folks in uh, Mount Juliet, uh, Tennessee, could not be more proud than they are right now. Uh, we're pretty thrilled up here too, comrade. Hey, thanks for that. And uh, like you like you mentioned, you 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 cued it. So fly navy. And we apologize for Santa and his dragon sleigh to be a little bit more on the Eastern Orthodox schedule and calendar. But uh, definitely a huge congratulations and thanks to our friends at uh, SpaceX for bringing DISS such a beautiful vehicle. Yeah, we concur there, comrade, and uh, congratulations, Hawthorne. Nice job. It's uh, been a couple of days getting here, and we're excited to have it on board. Um, and uh, we'll and that be digging in soon. And that exchange uh, between uh, Marine Officer Randy Bresnick, the spacecraft communicator here in Mission Control, and the Naval Officer Barry Wilmore, Station Commander, on uh, board uh, the Cupola with Samantha Cristoforetti of the European Space Agency, referring uh, to the uh, supply of Christmas presents, making a belated arrival at the International Space Station, but belated nonetheless, in good shape, with a smooth and uh, successful capture of uh, the Dragon cargo craft occurring at 4.54 a.m. Central Time, 5.54 a.m. Eastern Time, as the two spacecraft flew 262 statute miles over the Mediterranean. And this uh, spectacular view uh, in high definition, uh, looking at uh, the northern coast of Libya, 
as uh, the uh, Dragon and the station fly uh, in a northwest to southeasterly track across the African continent. Wilmore and Christopher Reddy now will turn over. Next uh, hour and a half or so of operations uh, to the robotics officer here in Mission Control, John Bellingham, who will take over uh, with the remote commanding to maneuver Dragon into its pre-install position. You see uh, the uh, common berthing mechanism at the uh, very top of the uh, Dragon cargo craft. That will be aligned perfectly with the active common berthing mechanism on the Earth-facing port of the Harmony module of the station. Ready to latch indications uh, will be received here on the ground and uh, Dragon will be maneuvered in where the bolting of the spacecraft will uh, begin. A series of uh, 16 bolts in uh, four gangs of four bolts apiece uh, will uh, drive a Dragon to a hard mate uh, to Harmony uh, for the next four weeks of cargo unloading operations. The hatch to Dragon is scheduled to be opened uh, tomorrow morning. However, if the crew continues uh, to move ahead of schedule as it has been throughout the course of the morning, uh, it is entirely possible. In advance uh, of that, however, the next uh, major milestone will be uh, to get uh, Dragon installed and uh, bolted into place on the Earth-facing port of Harmony transpires over the next several hours. In advance uh, of that, however, the next uh, major milestone will be uh, to get uh, Dragon installed and uh, bolted into place. We also will be advancing our coverage of the installation of Dragon uh, from its previously uh, published uh, time coverage at uh, 6.45 a.m. Central Time, 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time on NASA television. And we will be back on the air with our berthing coverage at uh, 6.45 a.m. Central Time on NASA television. So to recap, uh, Dragon completing a flawless rendezvous to the International Space Station, grappled uh, at 4.54 a.m. Central, 5.54 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, held in place firmly by the station's uh, Canadian-built robotic arm that was operated by Barry Wilmore, the station commander, with the assistance of Samantha Cristoforetti from the cupola of the International Space Station. After a short break here, the robotics officer in mission control will maneuver Dragon into its pre-install position, and then finally it will be bolted into place uh, to form a hard mate uh, for the next four weeks of uh, the cargo unloading operations, uh, removing the 2.6 tons of supplies and experiments uh, from not only inside uh, Dragon, but also from its trunk in the form of the cloud aerosol transport system uh, instrument that will be mounted on the external experiment platform at the forward end of the Kibo module. We'll be back on the air at uh, 6.45 a.m. Central Time, 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time with our installation coverage, so you'll want to join us for that. Later in the morning, Space Station Live at 10 a.m. Central, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So we'll be back in less than two hours for the installation of Dragon 
at the International Space Station. For now, this is Mission Control Houston.
As uh, mentioned a few minutes ago, everything uh, on the Dragon has been operating uh, to perfection since it was launched atop the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in the wee hours Saturday morning. Uh, the Falcon 9 delivering Dragon into a nearly perfect preliminary orbit, after which uh, a series of pre-programmed uh, rendezvous maneuvers, uh, burns of its thrusters uh, were executed on computer command. And over the past two days, uh, the Dragon has increased its altitude and uh, its fine-tuning of its path to the International Space Station, placing it in position almost two hours ago uh, for uh, its point at which it executed uh, the height adjustment burn and uh, approach initiation burn, as it is called in the parlance of uh, the rendezvous world, uh, to begin its final approach uh, toward the R bar, the position directly underneath the International Space Station, for its final uh, approach for capture. The capture itself, again, executed uh, by Wilmore and Christopher Reddy, operating uh, the station's robotic arm, the Canadarm2, from a robotics workstation in the cupola of the International Space Station, which is a standard practice now for arriving cargo vehicles at the International Space Station. Wilmore uh, and Terry Verts uh, will be collaborating on a trio of spacewalks beginning no earlier than February 16th now in order to equip uh, the uh, station uh, for the reconfiguration of several modules and a variety of hardware that will accommodate the installation of uh, the equipment needed for the eventual uh, arrival of the first of two international docking adapters later this year on the SpaceX 7 cargo craft uh, that is scheduled uh, for the summer time frame. The uh, arrival of the uh, international docking adapter, the first of two such adapters, will uh, set the stage for its installation on uh, the forward end of pressurized mating adapter number two, which used to be the port of call for space shuttles uh, before uh, the shuttle uh, retired, of course, uh, some four years ago. The uh, PMA-2, as it is known, at the forward uh, position of uh, the uh, Harmony module of the International Space Station will be equipped uh, with one of these docking adapters that can accommodate uh, the commercial crew vehicles that will be launched in the next several years uh, by commercial uh, companies uh, being Boeing and SpaceX at the moment. And there's a great view of the Dragon spacecraft as it flies uh, over the Indian Ocean to the southwest of the continent of uh, Australia. All of uh, the systems on Dragon in excellent shape as we uh, are approaching uh, the final uh, hour and a half of its two-day rendezvous to the International Space Station that to this point uh, has been flawless. Meanwhile, inside the cupola on the left is uh, Station Commander Butch Wilmore, Samantha Cristoforetti of the International Space Station in the middle of your picture, and uh, manning uh, the camera looking out of the windows is... Um, Alexander Samakutiaya, one of the three Russians on board the International Space Station, who arrived with Wilmore and Elena Sorova in late September on a Soyuz vehicle to begin their five and a half months on the orbital outpost. Uh, this activity is kicking off an extraordinarily busy six-week period for the crew on board the station that uh, not only will see Dragon's arrival today and its departure on February 10th, but also three spacewalks scheduled for mid to late February uh, by Butch Wilmore and Terry Verts. The final departure of the European Automated Transfer Vehicle that is set for February 14th and a variety of other activity associated with scientific research on board the orbital outpost as well as the delivery of more supplies on a Russian uh, unmanned progress resupply vehicle that is scheduled for launch on February 17th from Baikonur. All right, we got some good news that uh, we've been tracking uh, early on the approach about 10 minutes the whole time, and so we expect a 30-meter arrival at approximately 09.55. Um, there is an opportunity uh, to leave 30 meters early. If we hit the window of departing between 10.13 and 10.17, um, we'll actually get to the uh, go for capture window, and we'll just wait for sunrise plus one minute and your guys' positive evaluation that lighting is good, and we'll be able to go for a capture approximately 20 minutes early if you guys are ready.
and uh, we'll be ready. If the conditions are good, we'll be ready to capture. Houston copies. Randy Bresnik talking to European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti, who's in the cupola of the uh, International Space Station, along with Station Commander Butch Wilmore, who will be primed for the uh, capture of Dragon, backed up by Cristoforetti, who will be monitoring Dragon systems during the final phase of its approach uh, to be uh, placed in the uh, go for capture orientation just a few feet away from the International Space Station a short time from now. As you heard that uh, brief exchange, uh, uh, since uh, Dragon has arrived at its uh, milestone positions a few minutes ahead of schedule, it uh, can uh, be captured as early as uh, sunrise plus one minute. That would be the earliest go for capture that would be issued by the flight control team here in Houston, uh, depending on uh, whether or not uh, Dragon systems are all in order and if the crew is ready uh, to support an early uh, capture uh, for the Dragon spacecraft. There's nothing magic about the 5.12 a.m. capture time, uh, central time. Uh, that is uh, the target based on uh, pre-launch calculations by the uh, flight control team in Hawthorne, responsible for Dragon's uh, rendezvous uh, profile, as well as uh, the coordination with the visiting vehicle officer, Dave Harshman, here in Mission Control in Houston. So we'll be standing by to see uh, how much in, ad in uh, advance of that 512 capture time uh, we uh, are running. It is possible that Dragon could be grappled ahead of schedule this morning uh, because everything is going so smoothly. Earth-facing Port of Harmony, and that will be a hard mate uh, that will complete Dragon's journey to the International Space Station. The Dragon is uh, loaded with uh, some 2.6 tons of supplies and scientific experiments for the Expedition 42 crew, and in fact, uh, some of uh, the supplies on board Dragon are earmarked for Scott Kelly, the NASA astronaut who will be launching in just two months from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan to spend a full year in space with uh, Russian cosmonaut Mikhail Kornienko. Uh, Scott Kelly has uh, some crew preference items and a crew care package on board Dragon that will be stowed away for him. Kelly on the left, Kornienko on the right, in that crew, a picture of the two of them, uh, the uh, two crew members here in Houston in the final uh, weeks of their training uh, prior to returning for good to Russia for the uh, final phase of the training that will lead to their launch on the afternoon of March 27th, Iconor, on their one-year mission aboard the International Space Station. One of the items also uh, being carried on board uh, the Dragon cargo craft is uh, a scientific instrument called the CATS. That is the uh, nickname of uh, that uh, particular science uh, investigation, the Cloud Aerosol Transport System that is housed in the trunk of the Dragon. Uh, on Friday, in the wee hours of Friday morning, if all goes as planned, CATS will be grappled uh, and uh, removed from the... Um, trunk of the Dragon and uh, will be uh, installed on the external uh, science uh, experiment platform of the Kibo module, the, the porch, if you will, of the Kibo module, along with uh, uh, several other experiments currently housed out there uh, to investigate um, aerosols and other phenomena in uh, the Earth's atmosphere. So that uh, uh, robotic operation coming up on Friday in the wee hours uh, of this week on Friday morning. Dragon is scheduled to spend about four weeks attached uh, to the uh, Harmony module of the International Space Station. Once it is bolted into place this morning, the crew uh, will spend uh, several hours later today uh, checking out uh, the uh, leak checks uh, that are common uh, for any visiting vehicle to the International Space Station to make sure that we have a tight seal uh, between uh, the vehicle just arrived and uh, the uh, International Space Station. Once uh, those leak checks are accomplished, uh, the crew, if it wishes to later today, 
uh, that's at their own discretion can uh, feel free to open up the hatch to Dragon and begin to unload its cache of cargo, although the actual uh, hatch opening uh, is scheduled for the wee hours of Tuesday morning. So we'll uh, know more about that later today once we get Dragon uh, installed and latched and bolted uh, and uh, once the leak checks are completed by the crew on board the International Space Station. The uh, International Space Station is currently orbiting 261 statute miles over the Indian Ocean, moving from northwest to southeast in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. All of the systems on board the International Space Station are in excellent shape. About an hour and a half ago at uh, 2.01 a.m. Central Time, 3.01 a.m. Eastern Time, Dragon arrived at a point uh, about eight nautical miles behind and underneath the International Space Station. Station Commander Butch Wilmore radioed down to Mission Control and Spacecraft Communicator Randy Bresnik that he was able to get his first view of the unpiloted cargo craft. Tally ho on Dragon, Houston. All right, Butch, thanks a lot. Good luck. Yeah, the sun's flashing off the solar rays and looks like it's winking at us. It's pretty neat. That's awesome. Again, uh, that uh, short exchange between Station Commander Butch Wilmore and Spacecraft Communicator Randy Bresnik here in Mission Control occurring about an hour and a half ago at a point at which uh, Dragon was some eight nautical miles behind and underneath the International Space Station. A short time after that, a height adjustment burn called the Approach Initiation Burn was uh, executed uh, automatically through the pre-programmed uh, a thruster firing sequence loaded into Dragon's computers, and that began its approach uh, to what is called the R-bar, the radial vector, the imaginary line drawn between the International Space Station and the center of the Earth. The uh, Dragon arrived at the R-bar directly underneath the station uh, not quite an hour ago and began its uh, slow approach, uh, inching up the R-bar towards uh, its various uh, gate posts, uh, first at the 350 meter point, then the 250 meter point, and now Dragon is moving uh, towards a position uh, some uh, 100 meters or 328 feet away from the station. There will be a final uh, station keeping uh, position some 30 meters directly below the station or 98 feet directly below the station. Uh, the uh, flight control teams here in Houston and at Hawthorne uh, in California, where the SpaceX flight control room is located, as you see in this live view from Hawthorne, uh, all of the flight control teams will tag up and provide a go-no-go -no -go decision for final approach and capture of the Dragon. Once Wilmore and Christopher Reddy put the clamps on the grapple fixture through the uh, station's robotic arm, then uh, they will take a breather while the robotics officer here in Mission Control, John Bellingham, uh, does his work to remotely uh, control and operate the station's uh, robotic arm, maneuvering Dragon into a position for uh, its installation on the Earth-facing port or the uh, nadir port of the Harmony module of the International Space Station. Uh, the Dragon uh, will be carefully positioned uh, so that it is perfectly aligned. Um, its uh, common berthing mechanism uh, will be perfectly aligned with the uh, similar common berthing mechanism on the Earth-facing side of Harmony into what is called a pre-install position. And then uh, there will be a, a series of uh, ready-to-latch indications received here in Mission Control uh, where the uh, Dragon then will be bolted into place by 16 bolts, four gangs of four bolts apiece, uh, to securely uh, latch a Dragon onto the Earth. Good day from the International Space Station Flight Control Room at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, and welcome to our coverage of the arrival of the unpiloted SpaceX Dragon cargo craft at the Orbital Laboratory. 
You're looking at a live view inside the ISS flight control room here in Houston, where the Orbit 1 team of flight controllers is on duty at this hour. This is the lead flight control team for SpaceX 5 Dragon operations, led by Flight Director Mike Lammers, who you see uh, in the middle of your picture. Uh, to his left, at the bottom of your screen, is Flight Director Dana Contella. And at the top of your screen, in the uh, gold shirt, is astronaut Randy Bresnik, the spacecraft communicator, who will be talking directly to the crew on board the International Space Station uh, throughout the course of this morning's activities. So far, so good. The rendezvous right on track. In fact, uh, the Dragon spacecraft uh, is running a few minutes ahead of schedule, meeting its gate posts as it uh, moves uh, through its rendezvous procedures that began with its launch atop the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on Saturday morning at 3.47 a.m. Central Time, 4.47 a.m. Eastern Time from the launch pad at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. Some 10 minutes after launch, Dragon separated from the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket, deployed its solar arrays, all of its navigation systems uh, were checked out, and over the past 48 hours, it has been a flawless rendezvous for Dragon to this point, with Dragon inside 250 meters, or... Uh, or 820 feet of its target point, which will be a capture point uh, some 50 or so feet away from the International Space Station, where astronauts Butch Wilmore of NASA, the Expedition 42 commander, and flight engineer Samantha Cristoforetti of the European Space Agency will be standing by in the cupola of the uh, International Space Station, operating from a robotics workstation in the cupola to extend uh, the Canadarm2 robotic arm, the 57 foot long robotic arm on the station that will be extended toward a grapple fixture on Dragon and uh, it will be grappled uh, and uh, locked on at the end of that end effector of the robotic arm uh, for a capture of Dragon. The current capture time is 5.12 a.m. Central Time, 6.12 a.m. Eastern Time, although there is nothing magic about that time. As long as uh, we are in daylight, if uh, the crew is ready to extend and capture a few minutes earlier uh, than planned, then they will be given the go-ahead by the flight control team in he here in Houston, uh, assuming that all of uh, the Dragon systems can accommodate that. Again, all of the rendezvous burns uh, so far have uh, been adjusted uh, accordingly so that uh, the uh, Dragon has arrived uh, at its milestone points uh, a few minutes ahead of schedule uh, with all of its systems in excellent shape.